Welcome back, everyone, to the A10 Quick Start Series, brought to you by Quantum Networks. This is part two of our A10 V Thunder installation on VMware vSphere 6.5. Here's our agenda list for this afternoon. If you look at item number four, in part two, we're going to cover the base platform configuration, the network configuration, and some review some useful commands to view the config and status. Who is Quantum Networks? Besides being a group of good people who have known each other for almost two decades, we are a Texas-based IT reseller implementing data center technologies with a strong emphasis on security everywhere. My name is Marco Octavian, security evangelist, and I've worked with application delivery controllers and load balancers since the first generation F5 Big IP 500 series all the way to today. I've had a chance to touch almost every major vendor out there and I usually lead today with the ATN as my primary ADC solution and I've also worked a fair amount with VMware NSX and their load balancer. So I've been fortunate enough to touch almost all the major vendors in this arena. Intro to the ATN Quick Start series. This series is a set of short videos, just the facts basically, to get you up and running as quickly as possible. Okay, A10 vThunder installation on VMware vSphere 6.5. We'll be running vThunder version 4.1.1 P9. And let's begin. Let's take a quick look at our very basic lab drawing here. In the first video, we covered the management interface. And this video, we're going to cover the actual network interfaces, also known as the data interfaces by ATM. And they call them the data interfaces because, well, they actually pass all the application slash client traffic. So Ethernet 2 will be the 10.1.10.0 subnet with a 24-bit mask. And this subnet will host the virtual IPs and is also facing the most towards the client. Ethernet 1 is the 10.1.20.0 subnet with a 24-bit mask, and this is the subnet that our servers will live on. So the 10.1.20 is VLAN 20, and the 10.1.10 .10 is VLAN 10. And once again, these interfaces are called data interfaces by A10, and they are disabled by default, but we'll get more of that in a minute. Okay, let's take a look at, at the base platform configuration. Once again, as I mentioned, the A10 ACOS CLI has a very Cisco-like or HPE slash Aruba Pro Curve-like feel to it. It should be familiar to anyone with a little bit of a networking background. So we're going to enter configuration mode with the command configure. We're going to set the host name. We're going to set the NTP server. We're going to set the time zone. And then we'll change both of the admin passwords. We'll also perform a show run and verify the changes took correctly. I'm going to restart my SSH session. EN for enable. Configure mode. Host name SLB01. The VThunder prompt should change immediately. And it did. NTP. Whoops. Server. NTP.bluesteel dot lab which is our lab environment with several different clusters and tons of equipment to replicate and mimic and test customer configurations time zone
admin password for admin. I'm going to change the password to A10 demo with an uppercase A. I'm going to back up one level. Enable pa the enable password will also be A10 demo uppercase. And then we'll perform a short run. You can see the host name has been updated in the config, the NTP server, etc. I have two in there because I thumb fingered one a minute ago. I'll have to remove that in just a moment. Now let's jump over to the next slide. Network configuration, aka data interfaces. So we're going to enter configuration mode again with the configure command. We are going to create VLAN 10 with the VLAN 10 command. We're going to add Ethernet 2 to VLAN 10 as untagged. We will then create a virtual router Ethernet interface. We will then change over to that new interface, V10, which stands for virtual Ethernet. This is a layer 3 interface, same as a SVI. We will then assign IP address to V10. We will then change over to interface 2 and enable that interface because they are disabled by default. And finally, we will configure a default route. Let's enter configuration mode. Let's create VLAN 10. Let's add Ethernet 2 to it as untagged. You see how I abbreviated the command. Let's change over to our layer 3 interface and assign an IP address. Let's now change over to interface Ethernet 2 and enable that interface. Let's exit and back up one level. Let's now add our default route. Hit enter. Let's perform a short run to make sure VLAN 10 is there. It is with Ethernet 2 bound to it, untagged. And then our layer 3 interface V10 near the bottom and our default route. Okay, let's do something even cooler. So on this slide here, we're going to demo how we have the ability to configure the entire appliance with even more configurations than we typed in in about three seconds or less. So in the middle of the slide, you'll see several commands I've written down here. And on the right side, you'll see some GUI or web UI correlations of where you can find these settings in, in the web UI. Now I'm going to take all the commands in the middle, and I'm even going to add a few. And I'm going to copy and paste those into config. And we should be done in under three seconds have a fully configured appliance. Copy all these. Let me attempt to copy that one more time. Let's make some space so we can see any feedback that may appear on the screen. That was quick. And we'll perform a show run. IP DNS primary and secondary, DNS suffix, VLAN 20. As you can see, a few new settings have been configured. And it took about one second. That's a beautiful thing. Very simple. And then we'll save our configuration with a right mem. 
and that is a good base configuration for any appliance. Okay, so once again, I'm not going to go deep into the web UI because the web UI or the web GUI um, is very intuitive and anybody with a little background in networking uh, will find most of that stuff easy to find and configure. But we'll go ahead and look at a few things anyway uh, just so you can see the correlation between some of the CLI commands and where they reside in the web UI. So we can go to System Settings. Click on DNS. There's your host name, your domain suffix, your DNS servers. Move over to the time column. You can see the set the time, the clock, time zone, daylight savings time, so forth. We can go to system, I'm sorry, network interfaces. And we can configure our Ethernet interfaces, our LAN interfaces. Network VLAN will let us configure our VLANs. We can go back to network interfaces and there's an option for virtual ethernets we can configure the ve's as well so as you see once again you can pretty much click around and find your way where you need to be it's really very easy very intuitive and as i mentioned uh earlier if i didn't mention it i should have there is a wizard and i still think the cli version the, the copy and paste of the cli commands is much quicker but there is a wizard in case you want to use that system getting started it will walk you through three different screens to input all the basic information to get your appliance up and running okay useful commands to view current configuration and status so once again we will save our configuration with the write memory or WRMEM abbreviated write memory command to save the configuration we will perform a show run or show running config if you want to tab it out to see the configuration. Show int brief will get, let us know if the link, the interface is up or down, what the duplex settings are, the MAC address. Show IP interfaces will display the IP addresses that have been configured for the uh, various interfaces. Show VLANs, and I need to point out is show VLANs with an S will show us our VLAN information, or you can specify an individual VLAN. Show VLANs with uh, 10. Now, if you just type in show VLAN without the S, that's made for counters, so be aware of that. Show NTP servers. So I don't need to go through all these commands. There, there's a gazillion of them. But as you can see, it's very familiar to you probably if you've worked with any network appliance over the past decade. Uh, it should be a very quick ramp up time. And that's it for video number two. Thank you for joining us and I hope to see you uh, in the next video.